Hi there, focus. Due to the optical properties of photographic lenses, only objects within a limited range of distances from the camera will be reproduced clearly. The process of adjusting this range is known as changing the camera's focus. And that's what we're going to do today. By the way, the Wikipedia article about camera is available in many, many languages. You see them all the way down here. We go to the Windows General Editors menu and in the Content Browser we select uh, one of the motion capture creatures and uh, for example the walk number one. Like always it arrives in the scene huge so let's scale him down because he has to be in a certain proportion to the grid in order to uh, make this work properly. Usually the two of these um, squares here are one uh, are two meters high so he's basically a little bit tall now so it's better the animation is still intact we just scaled him down actually we could uh, always with the walk reference not with the skin we could uh, rotate him like this so he would walk towards us now so this is all fine um, now we create a camera and there are several ways to do this. There's the hotbox currently and I go, go to create or I could go to create or I could go to view and create a camera from view. So within five seconds you've seen uh, three ways to create a new camera. This is a new camera. It's called Perspective One. It sits here and we call it our cam because it's going to be our cam. In this window we won't see the camera. Why is that? Because we're looking through the camera. But let's go well, well to the front view and hotbox uh, panels perspective perspective. That's our ordinary perspective camera. And here we can move around and we, here we can see uh, our new camera. Let's go for this. And when he walks towards us, looks around, let's see how close he gets to us quite close actually so that's quite nice really so let's leave the camera sitting here and um, let's uh, measure the, the distance to him how do we do this first of all we lock the camera so it keeps sitting here we won't be able to move it I'm trying to move it now I cannot do anything but of course in the perspective window I can do it and the camera um, the uh, the rotation sign here is uh, grayed out because I cannot I cannot do anything with it. It's locked, which is just fine. Okay, now how do we measure the distance between the two of them? Uh, since this is one meter, two meters, three, four, five, uh, the camera and the character is currently maybe 15 meters away. Well, how do we measure this exactly? Using one of the measure tools in Maya. It's been in Maya since version 1, I guess. Create, Measure Tools and Distance Tool. Okay, the Distance Tool asks us in the status line, um, click to pick the points to measure the distance from. We're measuring the distance from the camera. So I pick the camera here. Actually, I don't pick it. I just set this locator here it's a lo locator one and then the tool asks me a click to pick the point to measure the distance to I want to measure the distance to him you see it's about 17 but when you rotate in the scene you see we didn't actually attach the locators to the objects we just pointed somewhere but we can do this now um, pick the locator number one go to the move tool and just snap it on the camera I think that's the key V yeah kind of worked um, locator 2 and let's snap the locator to that object here to that character here um, more or less um, now we need to find out the distance now is 13 by the way 
um, which we can see here. We select the distance dimension and here we see the distance 13.814. Now when the character moves the camera stands still of course this doesn't change here it's still 13 and we wanted to have this change because our um, depth of field depends on that distance. Okay how do we proceed? Um, it's actually very simple but you need to know what to do. Let's pick the skin. That's the skin of our character. Um, when we press the key W we won't see anything because we cannot move it. So it doesn't have a real locator. It's totally dependent on the walk reference which sits at the center of the scene. Now let's uh, check what happens to that locator when we run the animation. Stop it here. The locator is still here. So if we would measure the distance from the camera to that uh, object here, this uh, uh, translation icon uh, system, uh, we would always have the same value. It, it wouldn't serve our purpose really. So the trick here is to open the walk reference node here. The walk one hips is just the central node. When I shift uh, click here, I see the whole hierarchy of bones in our skeleton and with the keyframes down here. But the interesting thing for us are the hips because when you select the hips the translation icon is here and the translation icon moves with the character. That's the whole point of it. So uh, the constraints are under animation. So you need to go to animation. Here you have the point constraint. So the constrain commands always work in the same sequence. You have to select the object which is the master object, so to say, first. And then you select the slave which is going to be constrained to the master. So the master first and the object to constrain last. And then you go to constrained and point. And um, Basically what you now have is you move, you let the animation run, a roll, and you have the change distance here. And we're almost done, but now we need to have a value, that value here, 8.2 in this case, uh, always update in the camera depth of field settings. Where are they? Let's select the camera, and in the camera settings, you have, we started with the angle of view and the focal length, which is not the focal focus distance. All the way down we have depth of field. And that's the Maya depth of field, uh, which I uh, highly appreciate, but we won't use it uh, now because we'll render the thing with Arnold. And under the Arnold tab here, I reopen it, uh, you have a depth of field um, option. And the focus distance is set to 5. Currently it's not enabled anyway, but the focal distance is uh, set to 5, whereas we would need 8 in this case. And we want this number, this number which updates all the time and which changes all the time, it's 12 now, L, 11 now, 10, to be in that field. And how do we do this? Well, this is a part of Maya which is called the connection editor. And uh, it looks very abstract, but it's very pragmatic indeed. So um, usually I would search for the connection editor in the relationship editors here, but it's not here. I find that odd. No, it's in the general editors. And here I have the connection editor. The connection editor has two sides, a left side and a right side, and it works from two. So it uh, wants to pump one value, for example frozen, whatever that means, into another value. But this is still empty. And actually this is not what we want. On the left we want our distance dimension. That's the one. Let's select it here, and now we can reload it on the left. 
Here we have the distance dimension shape 1. That's important to have the shape 1 and not just the distance dimension. Um, let me just show you the difference. This is the distance dimension. It shows us the locator position, but nothing about the distance. If I select this and reload it on the left, I have the distance dimension 1, which doesn't serve our purpose. We won't find a distance here. It's not here, trust me. Instead, we need to pick the distance dimension shape, where the distance is in here, and select it and reload it on the left side. And actually, all the way down is distance. That's what we'll need in a second. So on the right side, we want to pump this distance value, that one, which changes all the time during the animation. We want to pump it into the uh, depth of field, focus distance of the camera. So on the right side, we need to reload the camera value. So let's select them in the, the outliner or here in the viewport and reload the camera right here. So our cam, as we called it, is on the right side. That's that one. It's again a node like this, which has the transform attributes um, grayed out because we lock the camera. We need to select the camera shape because here are all the interesting things like the focus distance of Arnold. That's why we don't find them here. They're just not here. So let's select this, our camera shape, and now reload our camera shape on the right hand side. So now we're fine. And now we need to look for an AI because Arnold stuff always starts with AI. Here we have AI near clip, far clip, exposure, mode, projection. And here we have the AI focus distance. When I, I, I clicked on distance here, when I click on focus distance, the both attributes are connected. This attribute feeds into that uh, attribute and you'll see an immediate change right here. So let me click on AI focus distance now. Now it's done here. So when I run the animation, it updates. It's only eight now. It's only seven now because the character gets closer to the camera. And now he's only 3.8. So that's done. It's the connection editor which you find under Windows General Editors Connection Editor and keep in mind on the left and right side you need to load the actual par parameters which are of interest here and uh, the shape and the dimension are two different things when you need the dimension you select the dimension load them into the um, into the connection editor well what else can we do I tell you something we will do now. We create a cylinder and m scale it all the way up and make it much thinner and duplicate it. Move it here and shift duplicate, shift D. So we have uh, a few more of them. And now let's move them over here. And now we go to this window, which is locked. And introduce a light, sky dome light. And let's render this. We want the character to be totally in focus, but the cylinders be out of focus. Why are they not out of focus? Because in the camera settings, our cam, where the focus distance is very much right, we haven't enabled depth of field. Let's enable it. Arnold updates the view. Same thing, everything in focus, because the aperture size is still zero. And we just need to raise it a little bit, and then we get a blurred image in the back. 
And the higher we raise it, the stronger the blur gets. And even the knee now is blurred because it's such a shallow depth of field now. So this is blurred, this is not blurred. And uh, let's go back to the first frame of the animation. Here it doesn't matter so much because the uh, character is still pretty close. Let's move here and you already see now that uh, he is more in focus than the rest. And now it's obvious. Even more obvious. And he's always in focus. And of course since the camera has to adapt to the d small distance now the background is going to be blurred much more and here you have the focus distance of 1.4 now and now he's he dived into our camera well I hope you liked it and you can make some usage of it when you render your next depth of field animation bye